Hi there, we've got another Incipia optimization session here, uh, fresh off the campaign structure, which in retrospect is pretty confusing. Hope that you were able to, to grasp the, the suggestion there. Um, anyway, new subject uh, is on the topic of tips for search ads, and we're going to go through four of those tips. So here is our, our test uh, demonstration account goalie, our to-do list. A uh, little cute guy here. I uh, haven't run ads in a while, but we still have some data here that we can use to, to analyze. And tip number one is going to be go through your reports and analyze how performance looks along different dimensions. Dimensions uh, are things that uh, have to do with the, the people that are seeing your ads. Uh, so that's in the, the characteristics of of when people are seeing your ads. So that's device, age, gender, location, even uh, time of day or day of week. These are all things that you can use to optimize above and beyond your keywords, your bids, your budget. So we'd recommend going through and looking at periodically uh, or for new campaigns, your age. See how each age range is performing in terms of CPA, uh, in terms of total spend. And usually you'll see that sometimes some age ranges or some genders or some locations, cities, states, or devices will perform differently at different uh, levels. So we can see that 18 to 24, we're getting a CPA of 37 cents. Again, this is a little while ago, um, but applying this uh, tactic uh, even to, to later on data would be the same application. So we see that the age range 18 to 24 only has 37 cents, this is great. Uh, we're seeing the 55 to 64 is actually pretty high, uh, 35, uh, basically most other age ranges are higher. Now, we don't have a whole lot of data here, um, only about $100 in spend, so we would probably want to wait to see whether that data, this trend of 18 to 24 year olds holds true moving forward. Um, but if it does, and if, say, 55 to 64 continues to be very expensive, um, then we would probably want to break these two into different ad groups, or at the very least, turn off uh, targeting for 55 to 64 and focus on our performance performing uh, target here. The one thing that we do want to caution is that um, it may be that 18 to, 20, 18 to 24 year olds are installing the app at a great rate, but are they actually purchasing once they get into the app? Are they uh, being retained in the app? It could be that we may have to pay a little more for, let's say, 25 to 34 year olds. However, they are much better users once they get into the app. Now you can't tell this just from this here, and you can't tell it from iTunes Connect, your app dashboard. Where you can get this information is by using an MMP, Mobile Measurement Partner, uh, such as Adjust, Apps Flyer, uh, Tune, Kochava. Um, you can also use Apple's uh, search ads uh, documentation to pull some of this data in, I believe. Uh, but best is going to be setting up an Adjust uh, mobile measurement partner, like again, Adjust, Apps Flyer, Tune, Kochava. And then, once you've got that set up, you're going to need to break out each age range into a different ad group because. You can't see retroactively how did 18 to 24 year olds in the search match type campaign perform. But once you break it out into a separate ad group, then you can see that performance. So for example, we can do, this is a search match campaign or ad group. So we're going to do 18 to 24 year olds here. Let's just say 50 cents. So now we have 18 to 24 year olds. And again, this can apply to any of, the, any of your other campaigns too. If you've got an exact match ad group and you're seeing performance for 18 to 24 year old. Uh, perform really well, break it into a separate exact match ad group. And then for the other entity, the other ad group that you're targeting, you want to make sure that targeting for dimensions is mutually exclusive. Otherwise, you'll have overlapping 
performance and you won't be able to tell uh, how each target or dimension is actually performing. So now I'm going to select age range 25 to 65 plus. So now you have two mutually exclusive targets. And we can see now in adjust how well are 25 to 65 year olds or 18 to 24 year olds performing uh, once they have installed the app. So that's going to be helpful. And you can also adjust your bid. You know, maybe we get better performance so we can get more conversions at uh, a lower rate even if we increase the bid. Uh, and here we're not doing so well so we want to reduce the bid. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, so we want to reduce the bid and pay less to bring the CPA down. So uh, studying your dimensions and breaking out ad groups for each dimension that you want to report more on or adjust your bid, your performance uh, levers is one tip. Another tip is that CPA targets is something that you can use. So let's say that for this ad group, uh, we're seeing poor performance. We just ma using manual CPT bid. We just cannot get the CPA down to an acceptable level. You can add this CPA goal in here and say, all right, we don't want to pay anything more than two dollars per. And actually, we have demographic uh, in dimension targeting set here, but we don't want to pay any more than two dollars per uh, conversion. So this is going to tell Apple, all right adjust our bid as necessary to make sure that we're getting $2 CPA. Now, CPA target should be something that is either done when performance is bad, you just cannot get the performance to come down, you've tried dimension splitting out into different ad groups, uh, you've tried reducing the bid, you've tried adjusting your keyword mix, you just cannot get the cost per acquisition down. That will allow Apple some more, it, it, Apple's algorithm would determine on a, a an impression and by impression basis what the bid should be so it does uh, help out a little more than what you've got at your disposable disposal here in the search ads interface uh, so when you're not getting good performance and you just can't seem to get it to work right set a CPA target or if you're limited by budget or you have a specific CPA target in mind and that's the most important factor, getting your CPA at a certain rate, then you can set a CPA target. The downside to setting a CPA target is that it will throttle your impressions. It will be more conservative with your bid, and even if you could have gotten, our target is $2, even if you could have gotten uh, an install for maybe 215 or 205 or 230, uh, Apple will lessen the chances of you getting to serve that impression and getting that install. So it varies what your impression share would be limited by, but just know that the trade-off between setting a CPA target and getting a certain CPA is volume. You're going to see less volume than if you were to use a manual CPT bid and no CPA target. So uh, tip number three then is going to be the last for this little mini series and that is going to be using uh, autofill results for keywords that you really care about. So I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of competitors. Um, that's one of the easiest ways to find high converting, uh, lower cost uh, keywords to bid on. And you can use it for, for anything. Any keyword that you want traffic from, uh, you can use this strategy. So I'm going to be looking in my iPhone for this, so I can't uh, demonstrate that. But for example, let's say that we want traffic from the keyword or the competitor Wonderlist. Oh, wait, wait. All right, we're going to go. Please excuse the Apple Search Ads interface. Let's see if we can get into an ad group here. All right, let's make a new ad group here. We want traffic from Wonderlist. It's a good competitor. Um, 
We want anybody searching for that. So normally we might think, you know, we'll add wonder list. Oh my goodness. Okay. So normally we would probably add wonder list as a keyword. I'm just going to go into Excel for this. And again, think about uh, the break, the breakout of um, exact match and broad match. So let's say that this is an exact match uh, campaign, and normally we're going to add wonder list. You know, that's the keyword that we want traffic from. But there's probably going to be a lot of people bidding on this if it's a, a popular brand, a popular app, and that's going to cause our CPT be, to be very high and our impression share to be low because there's so much competition for wonder list. But if you search Wonderlist, then you can see that you also get autofill results for Wonderlist um, cached or cached uh, full titles. So one is Wonderlist to do list and tax. Another one is Wonderlist to do and task list. So by adding these two keywords, we can expand uh, our coverage of Wonderlist into these other searches, which people may not be explicitly bidding on, meaning that we'll probably get better impression share and uh, we'll also probably get a better cost per tap. This is the very high competition variant of Wonderlist, but going after other variations of it, uh, or perhaps there's Wonderlist free, that's not an autofill result, um, but some people could be searching that, and free is a very popular modifier for searches. Basically by looking for other variations that there may be less competition on, we can expand our coverage out and reduce our overall cost and improve our conversion rate overall. So the same goes for you know, to do. Maybe to do is a very popular search, and this is going to be very high traffic. So we search to do and look at the autofill results. We see there's to do list, to do list app, to do checklist, share task, it's a an app's name. So we could say you know, to do list, to do list free, to do create check create ch uh, check list of things to do to do app to do calendar and this may be something that we don't want to add if our app does not include a calendar in it because that be you know could lead to poor quality installs once they realize uh, that our app doesn't have a calendar, or if they look in our screenshots and they say this doesn't have a calendar. So from these core keywords that we know we want traffic from, we're able to go and use autofill results to break out a, a much larger list, uh, in some cases, of keywords that are probably going to have less competition than this head term, this high volume important term. Uh, the same goes for autofill results, or sorry, for related results. So if you search to do, up at the top, we're going to see other things like shopping list, work calendar, day planner, rehearsal. I'm just jotting these down. Um, now, autofill, autofill results are pretty high in relevance, um, given that they, they must include the original keyword, the original in, the intent that we've entered in. But related are a little lower in relevance. Some of these will probably not be very related to specifically to do. Uh, related keywords, it's, it's unknown how Apple actually 
pulls this information, but uh, it's probably other, other things that people are searching or other things that people are downloading apps from. So we know that this is our target market. They're also looking for these types of apps. Um, but, and so because they're other keywords that our target market may be searching, they're good for us to bid on if they are relevant enough, like task, daily calendar, perhaps if we have a calendar day planner. The, the challenge with related keywords though is that our relevance for these is going to be lower because not all of these uh, we're going to have in our title or keyword space or description. Um, our app is going to be less relevant for these. So we may not have as good an impression share in some of these, but if we can start to serve ads for things uh, like shopping lists perhaps, maybe we have list in our keyword space and so that gives us enough relevance to serve an ad for that search. Um, then it can be beneficial, again, because these are other things that our target market is searching. For related keywords, you probably want to bid a little bit lower just to, to make sure that you're not paying too much at first before you know what the conversion rate is like for these. Uh, so maybe do anywhere between 50 to 75% of your bid, depending on how relevant it is. Um, but for autofill, you can probably bid the, the same normal bid because these are more relevant. And in fact, over time, you probably want to bid some of these up uh, to get more traffic from them as you see what the conversion rate shakes out and your CPA shakes out as. So uh, those are the two uh, few tips for today. Please subscribe, follow along at incipia.co slash posts for our blog. Join our email mailing list to get notifications when we post new blogs or videos. Uh, follow us on Twitter. And please do reach out to us if you have uh, questions you would like a walkthrough, we'd like a coaching session, or if you would like us to help optimize your search ad campaign or AdWords or App Store optimization, we do those as well. Uh, and if you have topic requests, we're happy to take those on and, and do a, a video or a post on those as well. Please uh, reach out to us and we'll see you again soon.